Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel, I'm back again. If you watched the draft video from the first draft they did of Dusk Morn on the went up on the here on the YouTube channel on Friday, you'd have seen the pack one pick one gave me a bit of a choice. Um, we had the Black Overlord, which I ended up taking, but the other choice was the alternate art version of this card, Winter Misanthropic Guide. So I figured, well, as you do the first legend I draft each time as the first YouTube video I did, so here we go. Um, we're going to do winter today. So, one black, red, and green for a 3 4 human warlock. Ward 2, and at the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws two cards. Okay, not so sure about that, but Delirium, as long as there are four or more card types amongst the cards in your graveyard, each opponent's maximum hand size is equal to seven minus the number of those card types. So, you've got creature, artifact, instant, sorcery. Planeswalker, Battle, Enchantment. So if you can fill the whole graveyard up with one of each card type, you can make everyone's hand size zero, basically, unless they've got something like you know, Red Equity Tower with Thought Festival in play, which I'll see in a lot of play at the moment. So I had to have a little think about this one. And this is what I've come up with for winter today. I hope you enjoy this one. Um, if you do, a couple of people have unsubscribed for some reason, but please you know, help me out. Hit the subscribe button that should have appeared down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen by now. I, you know, I'm at 519. I was at 523. I don't know why. I think five people, four people, sorry, dropped out because they didn't like the draft video. But please, just you know, if you're going to unsubscribe leave me a comment on video and let me know what I can do better to help you stay um, and if you haven't been here before please you know, subscribe if you can so here we go here's what today's video the well, video deck is all about so creatures only 24 on the deck um, and a couple of them are what you expect to be so birds of paradise is here and because we are playing Jun colors ignoble hierarch makes sense in this deck to just give us our three colors as well then we've got Kedrek Parasite. So whenever an opponent draws a card, if you've got a red permanent, they do take they take one damage. So you see, probably see where I'm going with this deck, can't you? Deathcap Cultivator makes an appearance as well. Has Delirium, which helps because obviously we do want to trigger Delirium because of Winter. And given a two-one Death Touch, isn't the worst plan in the world. Alongside Grim Flayer, um, got Trample, and whenever we deal combat damage to a player, look at the top three, um, put any number of the graveyard and the rest of them on so basically surveil three to all wants and purposes nowadays um, and then as long as they're four more it gets plus two plus two Croxa makes an appearance today um, just so we can do the whole let's escape I know we have to remove things from the car graveyard to exile it and bring it back if we need to escape but you know attacks or enters or attacks each opponent discards a card and each opponent who didn't discard a non allowed card this way loses three life a little bit more damage Stormfist Crusader everyone draws a card and loses a life which is very nice with the um, Keradic Parasite as we can imagine um, I am a little bit obsessed with Twitching Doll at the moment you'll see Twitching Doll appear in tom tomorrow's video as well um, but yeah tapping this and putting the nest counter on it now in the draft video I never got around to sacrificing the twitching doll if I remember correctly get the spider tokens but wow it's pretty good when you do do it because I've done it since then murderous rider for a little bit of targeted removal of some life gain and then polygoth makes an appearance um trample and meridian power is no, his power is equal to the number of card types amongst all cards in all graveyards and his toughness equal to that number plus one so with delirium on the go and us hoping people um, discard things yeah should have some big polygoths coming out especially with the myriad um, Zurazov Chaos Rider whenever an opponent draws their first card each turn if it's not their turn you create a 1-1 one, one red devil um, and with winter in play you will get at least three red devils if you've got both cards in play so that's pretty good and then whenever one or more devils you control attack one or more players you and those players each draw a card then discard a card at random more damage coming into them, hopefully. Hmm. Especially with Zoroths. Anyway, Anger's here, just to make sure everything's got haste that we need it to. And then Corum the Undertaker, plus X plus zero, works as the greatest power amongst creature cards in all graveyards. And uh, whenever it attacks, each player mills a card. And then during each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a spell from among the cards in graveyards that were put there from libraries this turn. Nice if you're running short of mana, you can attack with Corum, hopefully nick someone's land and then play something from someone else. Pretty useful. 
Fate Unraveler just deals damage when they draw cards, as we know. Gitixi and Puppeteer does the same thing whenever we draw our second card of each turn. And with Winter in play, this will always happen. Everyone loses two and we gain two. And when it dies, we get to return a creature card, mana value three or less, from our graveyard to the battlefield. Nice. Mind Rack Demon, just for a bit of fun for us. Um, I wanted something fun at the end, and this one's it. We've got to have Delirium before we put it to play. 4-4, four, four, four mana for a 4-5 Flying Trample Demon. Yep. Prosper's here because... I don't know. I just like Prosper, and it was red black, and yeah, sue me. Solemn Simulacron sorts our mana base out. Winter, its other version, is the Winter Cynical Opportunist. Um, Death Touch, whenever it attacks, we get to mill three, and then at the beginning of your end step, you may exile any number of cards from your graveyard with four more card types among them. If you do, put a permanent card from among them onto the battlefield with a finality counter on it. I suppose it's one way to get something back from our graveyard if we needed to. Balustrade Worm makes an appearance also from Duskmorn. 5-5 five, five that can't be cancelled with Trample and Haste. Necrogoyf um, went with the other group as well. Um, power and toughness equal to number, power is equal to the number of all creature cards in all graveyards. So 0-4, probably a bit bigger by the time we play this. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player discards a card. This one's nice because you can madness it into play if someone makes you discard it, which I quite like. Sizian Perverter of Truth, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses two and draws two. Fine. So Conrad's here, just so we can do some damage as our, creature, as our opponents put cards in their graveyard, which are hopefully creatures. And then Demolisher Spawn from the Commander set for Duskborn, Trample and Haste, and when it's got Delirium, um, other attacking creatures you control get plus four, plus four until the end of turn. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? A few Planeswalkers to help us out. Gris the High Tunga, again another card you'll see tomorrow. But, you know, have an insect token and then mill a card. And if an insect card was milled this way, put a loyalty counter on Grist and repeat this progress process. Okay. Minus two, sack a creature if you do destroy target creature or planeswalker. And then minus five, each opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. I like Grist, very nice card nowadays. Rend the Realm Breaker just means all our lands can tap for any colour, and then we can have lands become an elemental. We can mill three and put a permanent from our graveyard um, from among the permanent cards into our hand. And then minus seven, you may play lands and cast permanent spells from your graveyard. I would really love one game where I manage to get Ren up to seven so I can get that emblem because that would just make my day complete. Liliana's Death Majesty, yep, gives us a zombie and mill some, return creature cards and destroy all non zombies. Lord Windgrace lets us discard a card, then draw a card. If a land was discarded this way, we get to draw an additional card. And then minus three, return the two land cards from the battlefield. And then minus 11, blow up six non-land permanents, create six 2-2 two -two warrior, green cat warrior creature tokens with Forest Walk. It's just here because it's Lord Windgrace, really, and haven't played him for a while. Ren and Seven does the whole card, land bits we need it to do, gets us a tree folk if we need it, or we can return all permanents from our graveyard to our hand, and then we get no maximum hand size emblem for the rest of the game. All fairly straightforward really with winter. All planned around with the graveyard to a certain extent to help us negate the delirium bit that we're doing. That's how I'm looking at it. You may not agree, but let me know in the comments if you don't. I'm happy to take feedback. Um, spells, Assassin's Trophy, blow things up, heroic intervention and protect all us, ramp with nature's war, law and three visits, a bit of control with chaos warp, Jessica's will just so we can get the extra mana and exile the cards and hopefully cast them in one turn, damnation a bit more board control along with blasphemous act and then drag to roots is also in to so blow up a non-land permanent. Uh, Hopefully we'll be doing this for the same cost as Assassin's Trophy a lot of the time because of Delirium, but if not, oh well, it's four mana instead of two. But, you know, there's no downside to playing the four, unlike with a trophy where they get a land. Convert to Slime is also in from the Commander decks for Dustmorn. Destroy up to one target artifact, one creature, and up to one enchantment. Then, if you have Delirium, you get to have a big ooze token where the egg with XX power and toughness where X is meant the total mana value of all the cards blown up this way. Yeah, okay. Artifact wise, again, not too much. The boots of both Swiftfoot and Lava Spur are both here to protect winter. Then we've got Sol Ring, Arcane Signet, 
a little bit of more card draw with Harold in mind, Temple Bell and the Font of Mythos. But the one thing that is worth pointing out is Mind Crank. Um, whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into the graveyard. Not going to say you're going to be able to mill your opponents out, but it might make them think twice about doing some things. But don't remember, sorry, one thing I will say about this, whenever an opponent loses life, it's not during your turn, it's anyone. So as soon as someone attacks them, smacks them, um, they can start milling cards away. Might help. <laughs> Enchantment wise, a bit heavy, I'm going to agree with that, but Blood Chief Ascension is just fantastic because we'll soon get the counters on it and hopefully then just drain our opponents out every time whenever a card is pinned to an opponent's graveyard. Um, has three or more, you may have that player lose two and if you do you gain two, so yeah, get start draining those opponents. Bandit's Talent, everyone discards two, then at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep if that player has one or fewer cards in their hand they lose to. Probably not going to happen in winter, but Bandit Talent bit's alright. But the level three is really good. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card for each opponent who has one or few car cards in hand. Could be done. Innkeeper's Talent, just chuck around some plus one, plus one counters and then give them a um, ward when we have it. Waste not to try and take advantage of our opponent's discarding cards. We have all the courts of the colours in, so Court of Garen Briggs here to chuck around plus one, plus one counters. Court of Ambition for the whole life loss unless they discard, or, well, three or six depending on what they do, or where if you're the monarch or not. Court of Bounty just lets us chuck in lands or creatures if we're the monarch. Um, Court of Embreath gives us the knight token, then if we're the monarch we deal the damage. And the Court of Lochthane, exile top two cards of a target opponent's library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, or top, sorry, top card, not top two, um, if we're the monarch. If you're the monarch, until the end turn, you may cast a spell from among the cards exiled with Court of Lochthane without paying its mana cost. There's some big spells being played in Commander at the moment, hopefully this will get us there. Anyway, done the courts, rights are flourishing for the extra card draw on the mana, um, dropping the extra lands. The roller coaster, roller crusher ride is in, I like this. I had this once in a draft so far and it's just stupid in draft. Not sure how good it's going to be in Commander, but um, when it enters it deals X damage to up to X target creatures and if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a permanent or player while there are four or more cards types, double that damage. So you can theoretically wipe the board with this in Commander if you have enough mana spare and you've got Delirium on the go. Better that in mind. Um, spiteful Visions gives everyone a draw and then whenever a player draws a card spiteful divisions deals one damage to that player a little bit dangerous with us because obviously we take the damage as well but hey gets things going dead bridge chant mill our top 10 cards and then at the beginning of upkeep choose a card at random in your graveyard of this creature put it onto the battlefield otherwise it comes in our hand quite like dead bridge chant liked it back in the day as well but it's back now for commander Virtue of Persistence lets us nick a creature as well as giving us a bit of um, targeted removal if we need it. Sorcery Speed. And then Walk in Closet and Forgotten Cellar. Um, walk in Closet, we play that first so we can play land cards from our graveyard. And then if we need to do the Forgotten Cellar, we can uncast spells from your graveyard this turn instead of you know, whatever they are. But if we put anything in the graveyard, it gets exiled. So swings and roundabouts. <laughs> Land-wise, just 35. All the black, green, and red lands you can imagine are here. Command Tower is in. Uh, Field of the Dead's in, obviously, just to give us some more zombies. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's anything really there apart from Reliquary Tower. Didn't go with the Temple of the False Skills for a change, but Reliquary Tower is here just to keep our hand turtle going. But that's it. That's my slightly longer than usual YouTube video on winter. I hope you've enjoyed it. Mainly it's longer because of my plea at the beginning um, but if you think there's anything I've missed leave me a comment down below hit the like hit the share button do all the things to help me out with the YouTube algorithm I'd really appreciate it and um, yeah I'll be back tomorrow with the other legend that I drafted in the draft from last week so come back tomorrow and come and see a fun yeah definitely a fun typo deck I'll see you tomorrow take care everyone bye